Hey, it's Dana. Today I'm making a two-part silicone rubber mold with a plaster jacket. The first step is to brush a thin layer of silicone over the surface of my clay sculpture. I do this with an ultra-fast setting catalyst and a silicone from GT Products. Once it's on the surface, I use an air tool to blow the bubbles out. The second layer goes on about like the first, thin and ultra-fast setting. My third layer is a thixotropic layer. I use the regular fast setting yellow catalyst for this, so it gives me a little more time. I also mix up a larger batch, where my first two batches were about 150 grams each. This batch is about 400 grams. And I'm slathering it on the surface, like frosting a cake. Now I've tamped it down as it was setting with a wet rag. The next step is to create the parting seam. I've pre-cast some silicone into a cookie tin and I sliced it into sections. I'm using T-pins to pin it into the surface as I build it. I try to make my parting seams go either in front of or behind each of the ears. I don't want to put a seam down the middle of the ear. You can build this tight or you can build it loose. What your mold needs to do is work. It doesn't necessarily have to be pretty. The next step is to glue all these shim pieces in place. I've mixed up another thixotropic batch with the ultra-fast catalyst. I smear some on the surface and then use the T-pins to hold it in place. Each of the flange pieces is a little bit flexible, so if I need to, I can use extra T-pins to bend it into the surface. What I'm looking for is for the silicone to squish out from underneath each piece as I put it in. Now once I've got them all glued on, I use the rest of my rubber to spackle up the seams. I'm using a large tongue depressor and pushing it in, pushing the silicone into the cracks as I go. My next layer is another thixotropic layer with the regular fast setting catalyst. And this is to feather out the forms to make it easier for them to release from the mother mold. My final layer of rubber is a thin, ultra fast layer that smooths out the surface. You want the smooth rubber against your plaster so that it seats properly. I've also created some uh, keys, and here's what my keys look like. They're little slices of rubber with a T-pin ready to go, and I glue those right into that smooth final layer. Now I have to pull all the T-pins out, and then I can get ready to make my mother mold. Now I made this in a few parts, but I'm just gonna show you one part. I use a really fresh water-based clay to create the parting seam and I slice it into slabs and build it in place. I create some keys in there and then I can start putting plaster on. I put the first couple of coats on with a brush that helps me keep it nice and thin. I'm using Hydrocal here for this mother mold. As the plaster is setting up, you can build that initial layer up a little bit. 
The next step is to put some hemp fiber in. And that's going to give it reinforcement in the plaster. I've pre-soaked my hemp fiber in water so that it doesn't dry out the plaster when I put it in. And then I use my hands to put on a final layer, making sure that my flanges are a good thickness. All right, now that my mother mold is built, I can pry it apart. Whenever you're prying, you want to do it really gently. You want to create space rather than forcing it apart. Once the plaster is off, then I can cut the rubber mold. I'm using a mold key knife that's got a little rounded bit in it that helps the two mold sections key together once it's cut. I have to finish up the inside of the cut with a straight razor. Once the mold is cut and cleaned, then I disassemble my sculpture. I can reassemble the plaster parts, drill it to fit for bolts, Vaseline everything so that cast plaster doesn't stick to the flanges, and then I've got a mold that's ready to go.